It's August 1st, and that means the 2024 Comprehensive Team Rankings have been finalized. I'm Rankings Director and Transfer Portal Analyst Adam Friedman here with Jeremy Birmingham of Dotting the Eyes, the Ohio State Rivals site, talking about the final Comprehensive Rankings. Uh, the Comprehensive Rankings takes elements of the high school team recruiting rankings and the transfer team rankings. It counts the 25 highest rated players, whether they're high school prospects or transfer prospects. And you can find the full breakdown on rivals.com. And right now, like I said, I'm joined by Jeremy Birmingham of Dotting the I's to break down Ohio State's number two class in the comprehensive team rankings. They had the number four overall high school recruiting class and number 35 transfer class. But that transfer class had just seven transfers, but they were the only team to land two five-star signees, and they had an average of 3.86 stars per commit, which is the highest in the nation. Jeremy, this transfer class is really, really impressive. I think it's pound for pound the best in the country. Number one overall transfer in Caleb Downs and five-star quarterback Julian Sayan. A really spectacular uh, group. Then there's Quinshawn Judkins, and you've got Will Howard coming over, who's likely the starting quarterback this fall. What's it been like seeing all of these high-caliber players come in ready to play, ready to contribute this fall? Well, it's kind of funny, Adam. Obviously, Ohio State, the, the discussion around them nationally has been um, widespread about, oh, they attacked the transfer portal. They went out and really got, you know, crazy in the portal. But as you said, they only brought in seven guys. And of those seven, Julian Sane and Caleb Downs were basically a gift from Nick Saban out the door. So uh, the Buckeyes were not uber aggressive when it came to the transfer portal, and they never have been. Uh, it just so happened that in this cycle, uh, some things broke their way, and the Buckeyes, who are – uh, who try to be at least pretty diligent about making sure that they're not risking upsetting the apple cart when it comes to their current roster. Uh, because of, I think, just the pressure that's on Ryan Day heading into this 2024 season, maybe they were willing to be a little bit uh, more loose with things. And, you know, even just the addition of a guy like Quinshawn Judkins, the, the idea that he would come to Ohio State with Travion Henderson still on the roster was hard for people to to understand. But um, that was a relationship that was really buoyed by Davis and Igbenosin and Taiwan Malone, who Ohio State brought in the transfer portal the year before. So it wasn't a situation where the Buckeyes were being super aggressive. But if you look at the names in Judkins, um, obviously, and you mentioned Caleb Downs, and we've talked about Julian saying Will Howard, the presumptive starting quarterback, but it's also guys like Will Kazmarek from University of Ohio or Ohio University, I apologize to all the Bobbies out there. But um, <laughs> like Will Kazmarek is a guy Ohio State had as their top ranked tight end in the transfer portal. So they went out and got guys that they felt were going to be good fits for the program, but also guys that are going to contribute right away. Seth McLaughlin will be the starter at center. Will Howard will be a starter. Caleb Downs will be a starter. Quinshawn Judkins will be a starter or starter adjacent, however you want to break that down. Um, so it really is a, a class that's meant to supplement what they had returning, which is a, a really great group of eight or nine guys that all decided to hold off on the NFL draft, and then you bring in five or six starters, and uh, it, it's it's a pretty good group. Now, that dynamic between Judkins and Travion Henderson, it's, it's really, I think, one of the most interesting storylines of the entire upcoming football season. How are those two guys gelling, and, and I guess what's the relationship like between those two guys? They both understand that their futures are going to be better if they get hit less in college. Uh, you know, when Travion Henderson committed to Ohio State back in the – uh, spring of 2020, he did so within a week of Evan Pryor committing to Ohio State. Uh, and Pryor was a top four running back in the country as, as Travion was. And, you know, they grew up an hour and a half apart from one another in, in Virginia and North Carolina. And they both decided at that time, like, hey, we want to be a part of something where I'm not going to need to run the ball 400 times a year. I'm going to be able to get to the NFL and have some tread left on the tires. And I, I Ultimately, I think that the ability to do that for Judkins, who has taken a lot of hits in his first two seasons at Ole Miss as the bell care, you know, the bell cow back, uh, I think that was a major selling point for him in the decision to come to Ohio State. Those two have been uh, very close. They they do everything together. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a 1A and a 1B situation. It's not something where you're going to say Travion is the starter or Quinchon's the starter. They're both going to be a major part of a revamped offense that will include the element of the run game that Will Howard brings and, of course, Chip Kelly's uh, offensive 
pedigree and his acumen when it comes to the run game. So it should be a, a, a situation that works out perfectly for both of them. Well, an embarrassment of riches, right, on the offensive side of the ball, whether you talk about receiver or you talk about running back, right? Uh, Judkins, I hope, you know, defenses are aware of that incredible spin move he has in uh, college football 25. You know, I played it. I'm not, a, I, I'm a, I'm better with Travion on the run in the put in the game than I am Quinshawn. I'm not sure why. I'm, I, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Well, it's indicative of the the split they're going to get, right, in the carry. Yeah. I'm liking Quinchon Judkins a little bit better. You're liking Henderson better in the game. We'll see how it turns out on the field this fall. I want to quickly transition to the high school class that Ohio State signed, number four overall in the high school team rankings, headlined by number one overall prospect, Jeremiah Smith, a generational receiving prospect, high, high expectations for him this season, the receiver tradition at uh, at Ohio State just continues to be almost unmatched, I think, in, in recent history. Uh, then you look at Aaron Nolan, a five-star quarterback, who we'll talk about him and, and his situation in a minute. And then five-star Edric Houston, a, a defensive end from Georgia, and a bunch of other really good prospects. Mylon Graham, Bryce West, Aaron Scott, Ian Moore, the list goes on and on. All in all, this class signed three five-stars, 14 four-stars, and four three-stars for an average star per commit of 3.77, 22 total commits, and like I said, number four in the high school team rankings. Jeremiah Smith is getting the bulk of the headlines uh, at, you know, from, for this entire freshman class, and I think anytime anybody talks about Ohio State right now, it's about, hey, what's this freshman receiver going to look like? What have you seen from Jeremiah? Has he lived up to the hype? Has he better than the hype? What kind of comparisons can you draw uh, from his early performance at Ohio State? I think it's sort of crazy to suggest it, but he's probably been better than the hype when you're talking about a player that is is wildly speculated about and widely uh, talked about as the best receiver prospect to come out of high school football in the last 15 years. Uh, there are people at Ohio State who have told me he's the best freshman they've ever seen. Um, there are people who said he's the best receiver on the team right now. There are people who have said he's the best receiver in the country right now. Um, he is six foot four and 218 pounds and running at 23.4 miles an hour. Uh, he's, but he's also, uh, Ohio state does this social media thing where they do their dudes of the week, which are the guys that have really just been, uh, the leaders on the field in the weight room, et cetera. And Jeremiah has won it like five times in the last three months. Like, so it's, it's really the maturity that he's had, which has been surprising to people. I, I think that there's a belief that when you are a really highly touted player like that, especially one from South Florida, you're going to come in with a little bit of a diva mentality. Um, you know, there was all the discussion about signing day and how things went between Ohio State and Miami and the, the 10 hours that the Buckeyes had to wait extra for the letter of intent, yada, yada, yada. But uh, since he got to campus, he has been an absolute stud. And that's not a surprise that he's doing that on the field, but the the things he's been doing off the field, the maturity he's shown, the ability to really adapt. Uh, you know, at Big Ten Media Days last week, people were asking Emeka Abuka about Jeremiah and uh, Denzel Burke or Jack Sawyer, and you know those guys were all pretty good in their own right coming out of high school. Just okay. and they've all said to a man like the thing that they notice about him is that nothing phases him, nothing gets him to the point where he he gets distracted or he's going to get caught up in his own. Uh, press clippings. He he is the real deal. I uh, I don't. He's not going to you know because wide receiver, especially at Ohio State, you're you're playing a lot of guys. You're going to have three out there most of the time. He is going to be on the field play one, and he will be on the field all the way through uh, the next three years of his career before he's a top you know three or four draft pick in the next uh, you know in 2027. Yeah, and those expectations are not, you know, far fetched, right? These guy, this yeah. guy is a general generational prospect. We saw it for four years in high school, and he is already living up and maybe even surpassing the hype, like you said, Jeremy. Um, I wanted to quickly touch on Aaron Noland. Um, you know, he's in a really interesting spot right now. A five-star quarterback coming out of Georgia. He's there at Ohio State. Julian Sane transfers in after Nick Saban retires at Alabama. You get Will Howard, who looks like he's going to be the starter. And there are a few other quarterbacks uh, on the roster as well. What do you make of his situation and where he stands on the depth chart right now? You know, even with the addition of Julian Sane, which obviously was a, a fly in the ointment here because they're in the same recruiting class and they're both five-star prospects in that class, like uh, nothing really changed for air this year. And that's the important thing. So you got Will Howard coming in. You have Devin Brown behind Will Howard as the, as the guy that's competing with Will to be the starter. Julian is in that discussion because he's just 
so next level ready. Uh, Air had a little bit of an adjustment period when he got to campus in January that maybe slowed him down a touch. And so uh, the, that struggle that he had coupled with the addition of Julian Sain, I think had people wondering how long would he be able to stick it out in Columbus. He made it pretty clear uh, in the spring he wasn't planning on going where, anywhere. Did a real nice job bouncing back in the Ohio State spring game. Showed some, some stuff uh, at Ohio Stadium in, in mid-April about what he can do the thing about air is as a recruit, even like you, you look at him and he, he doesn't, he doesn't pop off the page in a lot of ways when you just see him, but when you put the tape on and when you put him in between the lines, he's a much better player than he is a prospect. If, if, if mm -hmm. at least from my, yeah, yeah from, from my perspective. Um, and so we saw that in the spring and I think that gave him some really much needed confidence heading into the summer. Uh, he's back, you know, he's in Columbus, he's comfortable, and he's ready to compete for that job next year. Now the question is, how many guys is he competing with? Because Will Howard will be gone, but we don't know what's happening with Devin Brown. He he has another year of eligibility after this one. If he wants to come back and be the the starter next year, Lincoln Keenholz, who is a, a super athlete, who is a you know a player Ohio State's really high on, Sayan has changed the conversation in a lot of ways because he, as I said is viewed maybe as the the most pro ready of those young of that next wave of Ohio State quarterbacks. And then you also have Tavian St. Clair coming in behind Aaron Nolan and Tavian is pretty freaking good. So uh He's a quarterback in his in his own right. Right. So this conversation is going to get uh more nuanced for Air, but it's really about how much he gets out of this season. The the, the idea was never that he was going to come in and play as a freshman because that's just not normally what happens, especially at a place like Ohio State. So the question is, how much does he grow and gain? How does he handle the 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 job of being the fourth or fifth quarterback on the roster this year? And does he use that to motivate him heading into the next offseason? Or does he use that as a reason to, to look elsewhere? And I, I think that we we live in such an interesting time now where you don't you really can't blame a kid for for moving on if if another situation presents itself as better but a lot of these kids and it's something Ohio State has been pretty diligent about they they recruit kids that understand the challenge and that want the challenge and to this point air has said all the right things and done all the right things uh so we'll see how it goes but certainly the the addition of Julian saying was not something that was anticipated certainly wasn't something Ohio State planned on doing uh, but again, when when a five star quarterback uh, you know asks to play at your program, it's pretty hard to say no. Yeah, hard to say no to a guy like that, a five star as a high school recruit, and then he was a sign and transfer guy from Alabama to Ohio State. Um, you know, really uh, hard to say no to that. Um, all right, uh, Berm, thanks so much for breaking down Ohio State's number two class in the comprehensive rankings. Make sure you give him a follow and check out all of his content on Dotting the Eyes. I'm Rankings Director and Transfer Portal Analyst Adam Friedman. Please remember to subscribe to the Rivals.com YouTube channel and follow all of the Rivals social media accounts. And of course, you can find all of our content on Rivals.com. Thanks a lot, Berm. Yes, sir.